Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for tuning into this recording. Um, my name is Thomas Valdrez, and I'm the city's senior transportation planner. And today we'll be talking about uh, the city of Issaquah's transit study open house. Um, so this is a pre-recorded version of the presentation that was given at the March 21st, 2023 uh, open house event that we held at Tibbetts Creek Manor in Issaquah. And so today we'll be getting by briefly introducing tonight's speakers. Uh, we'll then dive into tonight's presentation uh, where we can uh, provide a background on the transit study project. Uh, we'll briefly describe uh, the current uh, transit service, sort of how, how it looks like today, uh, talk about some of the key deliverables that we'll be developing through the study, and generally talking about how we can uh, think about ways to improve access uh, for transit in the future. Next slide, please. Uh, and so just generally going over the agenda, um, would like to conclude uh, with a brief uh, demonstration on how you uh, can get involved in this project. And we're really looking to get some feedback from you all, uh, specifically here tonight uh, via an open uh, online survey that we've uh, developed, uh, that the project team has developed, as well as uh, via an interactive web map, which uh, was also developed for this study. Next slide, please. So at this point, I will pause here and we can uh, begin introductions from our consultant team. Uh, so I'll have uh, Wintana Miller of DKS Associates, um, if you could please introduce yourself. And then if you want to uh, please pass that off to Veronica when you're done. That'd be great. Thanks, Thomas. I'm um, so I'm Wintana Miller, DKS Associates. I am the project manager on the consultant side for this uh, transit study, um, and I am joined today by my colleague Veronica Sullivan. Can you introduce yourself? Thank you, Wintana. My name is Veronica Sullivan, and I am a transportation engineer and planner and leading the public outreach effort. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending to this recording, and we hope to see you soon. Great. Thank you both. Um, so moving on uh, through the presentation, uh, we're here just uh, we're asking, you know, why, why are we studying transit? And so uh, as our viewers may know, uh, city of Issaquah, is, it, we've been growing a lot in the last 20 years. Uh, over that 20 years, we've uh, doubled in population and we're expecting more growth in the future. And so in advance of this future anticipated growth, uh, the city has really been proactively planning for high capacity transit to ensure that we are prepared to take that leadership role when light rail comes to our community. Uh, we also have uh, you know, many short-term uh, transit improvements that we are anticipating. So really just trying to make sure that uh, we have that community stamp over uh, any transit that is provided in this community. Um, so in short, uh, really trying to ensure that uh, as the network, uh, as the transportation network is developed, uh, we wanna balance our community's values and just making sure that we can stay uh, ahead of all that. And so just to provide a little bit of context, uh, so in around 2025, uh, King County Metro and Sound Transit will be implementing the East Link Connections Project, which is a coordinated uh, regional uh, transit mobility project. And it's expected to revise existing and add new routes. Uh, doing this will hopefully improve transit speed, reliability, uh, service frequencies, and span of service throughout Issaquah. And sort of as we look future, uh, you know, 20 years out uh, and, and beyond uh, in the longer term, uh, Sound Transit's South Kirkland Issaquah Link Light Rail Project is expected to bring new light rail service to Issaquah around 2044 or 2045. And so to that end, uh, you know, as we look down the road to how service will be provided in the future, uh, really want to hear from the community uh, and with your help, uh, we're really hoping to gather feedback from diverse voices uh, throughout our community to make sure that the input that we receive, uh, we can then pass along to uh, our transit service uh, providers, uh, make sure that they know our community stance on uh, how service is provided, 
uh, we really want to make sure that uh, we can maintain and improve transit service throughout Issaquah and beyond, uh, making sure that Issaquah is uh, accessible to all, uh, both inside the community and outside uh, as, as folks uh, travel through Issaquah. And really, um, the goal is really to uh, work to identify a lot of um, investments that the city uh, and in the community in general can make into uh, improving access uh, for transit. Uh, so with that, I will hand it off to Wintana uh, to talk about uh, the planning context of this project. Yeah, we can actually go to the next slide here, Veronica, thank you. So I just wanted to start out by noting that the study is not occurring in a, in a vacuum, right? There's a lot of work that's already been done, uh, both locally and regionally, uh, looking at transportation choices now and, and into the future. So we're working in the context of, first of all, Puget Sound Regional Council, PSRC's uh, regional transportation plan that, that looks out to a 2050 planning horizon uh, and accommodating the growth that's anticipated throughout the Puget Sound region. Uh, we're also uh, acknowledging King County Metro's work, as uh, Thomas already mentioned, the near-term service plan, uh, service changes planned with the opening of the East Link light rail um, and, and their long range vision, uh, which is called the Metro Connects that's looking out say 20 plus years into the future. Um, we obviously are also planning for Sound Transit's uh, plan that includes the light rail coming out to Issaquah in, in about 20 years out from now. The city of Issaquah has also completed and adopted multiple plans that provide a, a vision uh, a, and context for this transit plan to fit into. So the goals have already been, been established and we're just diving a little bit more deeply into transit. Um, and so if we go to the next slide, thinking in uh, transit, we really wanna first understand the demographics of the city, of the people who live and, and work in Issaquah. And so as of 2020, um, there were approximately 30,000 jobs in Issaquah and a total population around um, 40,000 uh, with the highest density uh, of, of people living in the Issaquah Highlands neighborhood. Uh, of those living in Issaquah, the majority are aged between 25 and, and 54 um, years old with the, about 12% of the population over the age of 65. 58% of the total population in Issaquah is, is white, the second largest group um, group uh, of Asia, being Asian at 26%. Next, next is uh, his group is Hispanic, about 7% of the population. And then if you're looking more closely, and if you go to the next slide at where um, folks of, uh, who have low income or zero car households uh, are living in the city, um, these are, we want to understand where these folks live because it, they're often are more dependent on, on transit. So we want to make sure that we're uh, providing service to, to all, uh, and particularly those dependent. Of those, um, uh, the folks, uh, so if you see on the right, the low income population generally concentrated on the south side of, uh, of I-90, particularly in the Squawk Mountain, uh, Newport and Old Town neighborhoods. Uh, trends for zero car households are also very similar. Um, and though it should be noted that the zero car households only make up about 5% of the, of the households in the city of Issaquah. But we wanna keep these things in mind as we think about access and who's using the transit system. Uh, if we go to the next slide. Using census data, uh, we looked at how people were commuting to work. Uh, excluding those who are working from home, which there are more and more of these days. The majority of people in Issaquah are commuting to, to work by uh, driving alone uh, with over 60, almost 60, almost 70 percent of the population driving to work alone. 13 percent are carpooling and 13 percent are taking public transit. Of those taking public transit, uh, there's those households are mostly concentrated in Issaquah Highlands. So we saw that's where kind of the highest population density is today, but it's also where we have a park and ride in the city. Uh, so relatively higher frequency of service. So these make sense, they kind of go hand in hand. In hand. If we go to the next slide. 
So speaking of service and where that service exists, this map uh, on the right is a map of the existing transit service and within the city of Issaquah. Focusing first on weekday service, there are three routes uh, with all day service at 30 minute headways or, or better. Um, there are five routes within Issaquah that have uh, that offer peak hour only service, peak direction, um, and one route that has all day service with limited frequencies. So in addition to these fixed route service, um, King County Metro also offers uh, van pool service, uh, which allows for basically an organized carpool system uh, to large regional employers. And uh, this is offered for, or is utilized in the city of Issaquah, both for uh, uh, folks coming to the city, Costco being the, the highest employer um, that has carpool or van pool service, uh, and then folks living in Issaquah going elsewhere, whether that's uh, Microsoft, Ex Expedia, um, Ex Facebook, et cetera, downtown. Uh, if we go to the next slide, we'll note that the weekend service in Issaquah is, is significantly reduced compared to uh, weekday service. So we just have those three routes uh, that have that relatively limited frequencies as well. We're looking at about an hour um, headways, com buses coming every once an hour kind of at, at most here. And then the next slide also wanting to point out there are some accessible, accessible services as well for those who qualify. So King County Metro offers access transportation and there's uh, multiple community-based organizations, including Hope Link and Sound Generations that, um, that provide uh, paratransit or service available for, for those who need it. If we go to the next slide. So given this transit service, we wanna look more closely at how accessible the current service is by walking, biking, and driving to uh, park and ride. So these are ways, these are areas that we're looking to improve within the city of Issaquah and are looking to incorporate uh, your experience in, in our understanding. So first considering people who are uh, walking, um, generally speaking, people are willing to walk about 10 minutes to get to a transit stop. So that equates to somewhere between a quarter mile and a half mile. So we look at what we call a walk shed. It's the, the distance about a quarter mile or a half mile from a transit stop, not just the line on the map. Uh, and with this in mind, we have about 17%, um, just 17% of this close population lives within a quarter mile of a bus stop. So it's quite, quite close. And then within a uh, half a mile, we get to about 30% of this across population. Um, this does take into consideration pathways that are available. It's not as the crow flies, but it does not necessarily mean that there are sidewalks available throughout um, all of these pathways. So these are things that we wanna think about as we think about walking access to transit. If we go to the next slide. This is focused on bicycle access to transit. So this, this walk, or no, sorry, bike shed uh, considers about a mile, uh, so a relatively close biking distance. Uh, most of the city ends up within a mile biking distance of a bus stop. Now, this does not, again, this does not necessarily take into consideration the uh, bicycle facilities. Um, grades, so how easy is it to bike here? Is this, a, uh, are, are these pathways accessible by, by every bicyclist or, or not? Uh, and are also bicycle parking. We know that so our park and rides in the city do have bicycle parking, um, but it's not available everywhere. Uh, so these are things that folks who are biking to transit would take into consideration. So you go to the next slide. Uh, drive sheds, there are two park and rides within the city of Issaquah uh, and considering about a two and a half mile to relatively close driving distance, most of the city is within that uh, two and a half mile range of a city park and ride. Um, that again does not take into consideration necessarily the availability of parking at that park and ride. So we wanna think about what are, what are other ways to access transit or maybe to access those, those park and rides. Um, so we go 
to the next slide. So things like the one the thing I was going to say, sorry, before moving on from the access to transit is this is an area in which we are looking for some feedback on or better understanding of, of how folks who live and work in the city, how they access, how they access transit, any barriers they have to access transit and things like that as we look to how can we improve transit service and access to that service within the city. So you can go ahead now, sorry, to the next slide. We did wanna have a better understanding too of just how well transit is performing within the city. So this is looking at um, data from 2019, so pre-pandemic data of, of where delays were occurring in um, bus service, looking just at purely bus delay, um, the travel times along the corridor, how much, how much delay buses are experiencing throughout the city as well as passenger delay. So that means not just the buses, but taking into consideration how many people are on each of those buses and the, the delay that those people experience. This helps us identify locations of greater need. Uh, are, are these places that we can consider um, looking into transit priority improvements uh, to help speed the bus and make it more attractive? So these are another source of input for, for folks here today um, or that can use the, the surveys, et cetera, to tell us more about um, where do you experience delay? Are there, th are, the, are there things that the city can do to improve that? And that's part of this study as well. Um, I think that brings us close to the end here. So that kind of where we are in the study so far is really looking at existing conditions. So we've, we've looked at who, who's uh, the planning context for this study. We've looked at who lives and works in Issaquah. Um, we looked at the service in Issaquah and how people can get to that service. And so we really uh, wanna hear more about your experience with that. And then we, we take that information and we're gonna look to the future network. What, what does it look like um, in five, 20 years from now? And what gaps do we still see? Who, who, where is the population relative to that transit service? Where do folks wanna go that they are not able to go using transit? We wanna look at potential for improved access and how, how can we get people to the bus service in a more efficient way? And are there strategies or policies that the city could, in, could pursue in order to improve transit? That, that's the next steps of our city, our city, our, our plan here. Um, and we are excited to work with, uh, work with the city um, to take this plan forward. I'll put it back to Thomas to talk about the schedule of our plan here. Yeah, thanks, Ventana. So uh, yeah, moving on to the project timeline uh, at a very high level, uh, you know, we're now just about in spring. Um, we'll be we'll be uh, looking for uh, for ways that you can provide feedback, uh, like Ventana said, um, provide feedback on uh, accessibility throughout uh, the city. Um, so that's that orange. Uh, talking bubble there. Um, as we look towards summer, uh, we will be developing our first round of capital improvement projects. Uh, this list is really uh, mostly focusing on enhancing speed and reliability of existing transit services. Uh, so really looking for feedback on like what Wintana said, just, uh, you know, if you experience any delays, that'd be great, uh, great information to provide uh, feedback on. Uh, we'll then be focusing on a second list of projects uh, in winter uh, 2023, uh, really focusing on accessibility to transit stations or other sort of transit supportive programs, uh, anything that might be supportive or you know helpful generally uh, to folks that currently use transit or would like to use transit. Um, and finally, just kind of concluding, uh, all of this information will be uh, useful when we update the mobility master plan uh, in spring 2024. And so this is really just feeding into that process. Uh, the mobility master plan is really the uh, implementation arm of the city's uh, comprehensive plan, which really guides uh, what the city does uh, in really all facets of what we do. So uh, you can think of this as really uh, feeding into the, uh, the, the transit 
section of the mobility master plan, which is really uh, shaping how the city uh, you know, does business, how we provide services and all that. So with that, I will now pass it on to Veronica who uh, will walk us through how you can provide feedback for this. Great, thank you so much, Thomas. Um, so today I'm going to be going over the public input. We really want you to get involved in this entire transit study. And we want all of your ideas and input and opinions regarding any of the particular I, um, in, improvements for the transit service for that project list phase one. So there are three ways you can get involved. The first one is the project website. The project website is, is Quad Glove uh, and then follow that URL. And it will look something like this. Uh, it's, a it's a wonderful website. It has the overview, the background, engagement opportunities here, the open house and the timeline. The re this recording and an FAQ will also be posted up here as well. But there are two really key engagement opportunities that you we want you to be involved. The first is the survey, which you can click right here. And it's about 15 questions. It takes about six minutes and it's in English, Espanol, Spanish, and in Mandarin. And the last one, uh, oh here, is also is a project website. And on the right-hand side, you can stay connected by clicking on the notify me tool. And you can subscribe to the email notifications with anything changing with this particular project. And then you can also click on the contact us to email directly to Thomas. So far, we've received 118 responses and survey from surveys. Uh, it's fantastic news. It only takes about six minutes. We highly encourage you that you also participate in the survey. One of the questions that we asked is what factors would make you want to ride transit more often? And here are the five top results. Uh, the first one was if riding transit got to me, got to where I need to go faster. Um, if there was a transit stop within walking distance where I usually live. If that transit service was offered more frequently. If bus stops or stations were safer. And if there were a reliable place to leave my car, such as a parking lot. So that's all very, very good information and really insightful. And then the last tool that I want to share with you today is our interactive comment map. So after you do the survey, you can also go on to this great website. It's called Social Pinpoint. Also can be uh, accessed using the project website. It will bring up to this page here called Social Pinpoint. Um, when you first click on to the website, you will have a welcome page. It will look like this. And it will show you that there is translation services. It can translate up to 50 different languages. And it gives you some instructions and link to the project website. The language, the language services can be accessed on the top right-hand corner by clicking on the drop-down menu. It will automatically update all the text into that preferred language. On the left-hand side of the Social Pinpoint website, you will see multiple tabs. The first tab is just about the project and how to provide feedback. There's also activity tab where you can sort by most recent and most popular comments. So far we received over 15 comments and you can like and dislike other comments. Any comment that you post on here will be a remain anonymous. There's also contact information. And if you don't want to add in your own comment, you can also click on this text box here and submit your comment. So how do you submit your comment? Well, you can use your cursor to zoom in really close into where you'd like. For example, on this location here, we have about three comments. You click and drag any of the top icons um, on the top of the bar, improve transit service, something I like, transit comment, bicycle comment, pedestrian comment, or other comment. You can type it in here. You can and just enter email. You can also optionally add your first and last name and phone number and zip code. And you can also attach a photo as well, which is really, really exciting. If you have a particular bus stop and location that you feel is unsafe or there's a bus stop uh, shelter that needs to be fixed, please attach a photo and we can address those. Add those comments on there and then click on add comment. You can also click on this remember page so that you don't have to continually add your email. So let's see what comments we've seen so far. So there's some, there, this particular comments had three likes from other users. 
There's no consistent transportation in the senior center. My friends are not able to go to the senior center because they have no transportation. So all of these comments are super important for the project team to know so that we can improve um, on our transit service and it will impact our transit study. On behalf of uh, DKS and the city of Issaquah, thank you so much for listening to this recording and I'll hand it off to Thomas to, to close us off. Thanks everyone. Yeah, so, uh, you know, really excited to talk to you all. Um, you know, this is a pre-recorded video. Uh, so if you're watching this, you may have not been able to attend uh, the in-person in uh, open house event that we had at Tibbetts Creek Manor on March 21st. Um, I am always willing to receive uh, emails or phone calls. And uh, if you go to the project website, my contact information is there. Uh, willing to chat with anybody but about transit and um, really hoping that you all can provide very good feedback um, that we can use directly into the planning process uh, for improving transit accessibility um, throughout the city. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it.